people who just don't care about other people, people who care more about electronics, care about their clothing, care about their material possessions. There are some people who rise above the fray, who want to do good for the world and change the world. And so I would like to introduce you to Lindita Semenyaku, human rights activist, and we're very lucky to have her here today. Poverty is a very real thing in our world. In the United States, 50 million people are poor. Can you live with $10 a day? Can you imagine doing that? Well, 80% of the people in the world are trying to. Because of poverty, women are abused, used as sex slaves, have no freedom to choose throughout their life. Would you believe that millions of people die each year from hunger and hunger-related disease, from dirty water and from preventable disease like malaria? There are 2.2 billion children in the world and half of them live in extreme poverty today. We live in information age, yay! Two billion people in the world have never even seen a computer. 50 million people in the world have never had electricity. In fact, 25% of the people in the world live without it. Nearly 1 billion people does not know how to read and write. And I personally know what poverty feels like because I lived it. To be a child and live in poverty, for example, when I was growing up, I did not have any toys. I did not have good clothing. Um, I had to work from a very young age to support my family's low income. And I would work after school and I would go home when it was dark and I had to study with holding a candle to my book. With extremely poor people, there is no room for business dealings. For the most part, the mentality of a female is uh, to, or maybe say the purpose of a female is that she would get married, she would have children, she will cook, she will clean, she'll take care of the household. And to wash your clothes by hand, you never get a vacation, you buy third or fourth uh, hand clothing because you can never afford the new ones. And I'm gonna say this, and this is, this is uh, unbelievable, but women in third world countries use rags for their periods because they cannot afford disposable pads and tampons. So women cannot go to the doctor for their general the general is non-existent. There is no plumbing available. In rural areas, women have to walk two to three miles to fill up gallons like this with water, unfiltered water, and bring it home to drink it. This is what's happening. Thousands and thousands of Albanian women do this today. And you see them today doing this. So, heat is a luxury in cold winters. Families put layers and layers of clothes. And what does it mean to be a man living in poverty? Basically, men, they bring their bride to their parents' house, and the parents leave the bedroom, give it to, the, to their son. Them. In most cases, the men, husbands are not employed, so they leave off of their parents' social security. So you can imagine that uh, you have many families in developing countries right now which live within one bedroom apartment and there are eight or ten. Can you all imagine how you can, and the prices in Albania are like here in the US. So can you imagine making it through, paying the bills too, with $300 a month? Many yeah. developing country, uh, countries are abusive towards women. 50 to 60% of, of women in developing countries are abused 
uh, regularly. Women are not happy. And uh, however, divorce is not an option, primarily for financial reasons, but it is also looked, uh, it's not culturally accepted. Um, so you have boys growing up, uh, seeing their dad abuse their mom, and you have girls growing up thinking that um, thinking that husband, uh, it's okay for the husbands to abuse. We need to teach the women in, in third world countries because they live only in that reality. They, do not, we need to, they don't know any better. So we need to teach them, you know, that it is not right for anyone to... Because of poverty, we have a very sad world. We have a cold world. We have a lonely world. We have a desperate world. We have a hungry world. We have an illiterate world. We have an aggressive world. We have a violent world. I present to you the solutions of poverty in Albania that stem from my own suffering of living in poverty and they are tailored to help from the bottom up, starting from those who need it most. 35% of the people in the greater Albania live in extreme poverty. Extreme poverty is more than the lack of money or material resources. It is the condition whereby an individual lacks the opportunity to make meaningful choices that will substantially, sustainably improve his or her life. I am a firm believer though that unless you accept you have a problem, you will never be able to fix it. My fellow Albanians, let's begin to accept the reality that is going on in Albania. So, because if you see the Albanian TV, you see uh, Hollywood-like shows, and we even have Albanian Fashion Week, when more than 85% of the people cannot afford to buy new clothes, let alone fashion design clothes. We have like food shows teaching people how to cook things like meat and fish and chicken. The average of most of the people in Albania eat meat probably every three weeks if they're lucky to do that. And you know why? That is that is why. Because the wages in Albania they are so low. 1997, all the Albanians lost their wealth in the Ponzi schemes. They sold their homes, their businesses. So, and you know, from then on, the economy, you know, has, has been going down and the jobs weren't available as they have been. So that is one reason. In the Kosovo war was one that also destroyed the Kosovo's economy right now. Uh, the, the Serbian rebels destroyed Kosovo. They burned homes, they destroyed institutions and Kosovo refugees had to actually empty Kosovo for a while and they most of them came to Albania and when they came back home this is what they found this is a woman in her kitchen in that's the stove she used to have so most of these families now are in extreme poverty because they cannot have not been able to there is public assistance though uh, many people who because of the corrupt the corruption that goes on there. Many people who deserve it do not get it, but however, there is public assistance. And uh, public assistance is $7 a month per person. <laughs> so now wonder why the kids look like this. They are dirty, unclean. So, well, their moms do not have money to buy shampoo detergent, soap for them to wash. When it comes to extreme poverty in Albania, we're not talking about millions. We're just talking for one million people. Apparently they are in Albania, 
Kosovo, Montenegro, and Macedonia. Initially, I believe that we should register the people, the extremely people, register them all, look for them, and they're not just in the cities, they are in the villages, and they're hidden in the mountains, like the 1,300 people in the village of Orjost in, in, in Cooks, who live for the past two decades. No electricity, no water, no roads, or opportunity for higher education. Raise momentarily the public assistance to $150 per person so they can live, they can at least live as poor people. They can at least have some ground to base it on. Then this will help end child labor. Because no parent wants to see their child work on the fields, roam the garbages, or sell candies on the street, get chromite stones to sell them. For a dollar five hundred fifty cents a day, yeah. they actually very much would like their kids to go to school and succeed and make them proud. They want their children to have a chance to be children and worry about getting good grades and going to school like every child should. We have heard that the education in Albania is free. Well, it is not free. Because to travel to school, you need money. To buy books, you need money. To eat something to keep your breath alive, you need money. To live near the school, you need money. And until you create a system and implement it and take care of all of the above, education is not available for anyone. And opportunities mean nothing if people can't take advantage of them. Furthermore, we need to design education programs where moms and dad can, dads can go for a few months or a year and learn a new trade, learn new skills, so they can have more opportunities to get a job or create one themselves they can be able to make their own living we must give equal opportunity to women to succeed because 50 percent of the population in every developing country is not productive is let and those are the women of the country we no women in albania should live in slavery or anywhere else and many of them no do. men should put hands on a woman regardless what she we must does. protect women in danger. We must protect women in danger. Till now, we have failed. Many women in Albania have been killed as a result. Many of them are abused. They are being abused as we speak. We must give women their, and their children free shelter, food, counseling, and we must teach them a trade or skill so that they can be able to be self-reliant and live with dignity and respect and raise the children properly. We must punish the abuser, the abusers, and not let them get away with crime like they have. In Albania, a man who killed a woman was, was, went in prison for six months. A guy who stole five chickens went in prison for six months also. That's how much the respect of a woman means in third world countries. No female should live in fear and no man should go unpunished. Children shouldn't have to grow up in witnessing abuse. This needs to stop. We should invest in the housing industry, take people out of their shacks and build them modest homes. It is a normal procedure in the corrupt countries that funds are mismanaged and stolen. And this is why I say, government do not give contracts to build homes 
to the company that is owned by your cousin, your friend, or someone belonging to your party. Give it to the poor construction workers, to the honest people who will not only do it for free, but they will add from their own pockets to help those who really need the it. The same method should be used to pave the roads for the water drilling and for the wastewater systems. With extremely poor people, there is no room for business dealing. 82% of extremely poor people in, live in rural areas in the entire world, and that, that is true for the Albania as well. This is why it is essential that 82% of the effort to rid Albania from extreme poverty should be given to rural areas. Many people in the villages of the Greater Albania have no roads. We should pave the roads and, and provide transportation so the people can be mobile. We, ex we should ex and be able to exchange ideas and information and sell goods to a nearby shopping center. Teach them how to build nurseries. So they, with fruits and vegetables, so people can plant them on their land and eat some and sell some. We should introduce innovative ideas to them. That is how, so that they can make the best use of the land, knowledge and skills. The children in the rural areas, in today's day, they, they, they averagely walk two to three miles to get to the nearest school. Most of the schools are old, you know. In the schools, in this one school, for example, children, they have to hold an umbrella inside of the school because it was, the rain was coming inside. Many schools, they are so old that they risk the lives of the students and teachers alike. It is a must for new schools to be built, roads be paved, and free transportation be available for all the kids because the children are the future of the world. I have not become a human rights activist. I was born one. And I have seen some things that could use some improvement here in the US. In America, we should end this mentality that beautiful means young and thin. Maybe the beauty should stem from within. We should respect and accept those who are different than us and really mean it like people who are born with special needs. But most importantly, I think it is essential and crucial that we stop bullying. Thank you so much for being here.